Hello, everybody, and welcome to the beginning of Unit 2, Macronutrients uh, Intro, I guess. It's not a very good description. Again, mouse, go away. It, it doesn't feel like a great dis description. What we're going to discuss in this one are the nutritional challenges inherent to... Uh, it's an intro to the challenges inherent to gerontology. There are unique issues that come up for the elder population based on aging. And as we'll go through this, you'll see that aging is really just a risk factor in and of itself. So what are we talking about in this particular module? Um, we're going to identify malnutrition risk factors for geriatric patients, uh, identify the morphological changes related to age that make elders more susceptible. As I said, aging itself is a risk factor, and we'll discuss some of why. And we're going to define a macro and micronutrients. And what I mean by that is not so much what are they, because I, I know you totally know what macro and micronutrients are. We're going to discuss uh, what we're going to look at within the context of gerontology. So what are the elders at risk, the elders? What are elders at risk of? Um, well, everything. And uh, you can see here in the list, um, age itself is a factor. As I said, frailty, and again, we'll, we'll get to frailty. Polypharmacy, which is defined in this study as more than five medications. And trust me, five is small for a elder population. Uh, constipation is, is a risk. Dementia is a tremendous risk. Eating dependency, as far as are they, do they require a uh, queuing or maybe literally someone to physically feed them? That, that's a huge risk factor for them. Loss of interest in life. I, I'm sorry, guys. This, some of this is kind of a bummer. So just you know, strap in, I guess. And, and dysphagia. The, a difficulty in, and this could be either version of either they're having problems swallowing, which is what this one specifically references, or there's also dysphagia, which is difficulty in making yourself understood. They specifically noted swallowing. I also want to just mention that making yourself a lack of ability to communicate can also be a risk factor. Uh, also, many elders are in some form of a facility. Uh, I don't really love the term institutionalization, but, you know, in a facility of some sort, whether that's long-term care, assisted living, even, even community elder community living can be a risk factor. Uh, obviously, the more acute a facility is, the higher the risk factor. Uh, within a nursing home, there's a 36% 36 uh, 36 of the population was at risk of developing malnutrition, 8% uh, was malnourished, and the risk of anemia doubled. So as we go in here, keep in mind that some of the problem with aging and the comorbidities associated with it are a bit chicken and egg. We don't know if these problems develop due to aging that then lead to malnutrition risk or if the malnutrition triggers some of these changes. It, nobody is sure, and I honestly don't know if there's a way to be able to differentiate that ever. But for right now, we don't know. We just know that these are associated with each other. So the first one is uh, altered or decreased sensory function. So age is positively associated with dys uh, dyskusia, dysosmia, uh, and lack of thirst. Now, dyskusia is um, altered taste, um, or you have agusia, which is lack of taste. You might also, I have heard people pronounce this as dysgeusia. Dyskusia is the correct pronunciation, but, you know, don't, don't call anyone out on that. It's not worth it. So... This is believed to be due to a, a decrease in the density of taste buds. Some people, I should say some literature says that it might be due to like kind of a decrease in the acuity of taste buds. Uh, dysosmia is due to the atrophy of the uh, olfactory epithelium, so the lining of the nasal cavities. Maybe? Again, we kind of we don't know. Uh, there does appear to be a lack of thirst sensations. And there is a loss of visual and audio acuity, which can also, or which does also link to a risk of malnutrition. 
Uh, we'll also discuss wasting syndromes. There's, there's two specifically that we will discuss within the context of aging later. Uh, this is just an overview. There's sarcopenia, which is the depletion of lean body mass and results in the loss of mass and strength. Generally speaking, in sarcopenia, adipose tissue is not depleted at all. It can be age-related. It's not necessarily age-related. In fact, there is a whole separate, um, I was going to say subgenre. That doesn't make sense. There's a whole group of sarcopenias, age-related sarcopenia, which is that. It's just sarcopenia related to aging. There's also sarcopenia related to disuse, related to injury. And a person can have more than one. So it's possible they can be sarcopenic due to aging and sarcopenic due to lack of use. Um, the issues on sarcopenia being related to nutrition are not great. There's not a lot of evidence one way or the other, but it's definitely important in recovering from sarcopenia. The other, uh, excuse me, the other wasting syndrome we're going to discuss is cachexia, which is, uh, tissue wasting due to an underlying medical condition. Um, yeah, cachexia is not really an age-related issue. They used to discuss uh, age-related cachexia, but that's kind of been, that's been moved over more to sarcopenic aging at this point. But again, just because you have sarcopenic aging does not mean that you can't also have cachectic loss. This is due to um, things like anything that's very, very uh, catabolic, cancer, um, kidney disease, severe kidney disease, uh, hepatic disease. Anything that will ramp up the metabolic state can cause a cachectic state to develop. And in order to resolve cachexia or a cachectic, cachectic state blah, blah, in a patient, the first thing that has to happen is the underlying cause must be resolved or at least managed. They also have altered GI function. Uh, age is associated with gastric atrophy. And again, we'll get into more of this as we go on. The gastric atrophy is believed to be a chronic inflammation of the gastric mucosa that leads to the destruction of gastric glandular cells. Wow, I'm not, my words aren't working for me today. So uh, this decreases uh, gastric acid production, decreases pepsin secretion, and increases the risk of H. pylori developing. It also ha uh, they also can present with slowed peristalsis, both esophageal and intestinal, which uh, can lead to early satiety, uh, a loss of appetite, maybe, but definitely early satiety, also constipation, slower emptying. Uh, why is this the case? Again, uh, kind of chicken and egg. The proposed mechanism here is... Um, the gastric acid reduction leads to malabsorption, especially of protein and B vitamins. And again, we'll get more into detail on this as we go forward. Also, uh, malabsorption is believed to be related to an age-related loss of macrovilli in the small intestine. Remember, that is what's absorbing nutrients. You have fewer of those. You have less ability to absorb nutrients. So very quickly, what are we talking about when we talk about macro and micronutrient deficiencies? Like I said, I, I know you know macronutrients and micronutrients. Specifically in elder care, when we talk about macronutrient deficiencies, what practitioners typically want to know is uh, what is their calorie intake? What is their protein intake? Those are the two big ones. And sometimes it's what is fluid intake also. The micronutrient deficiencies, um, the B vitamins, like all of them, uh, specifically though B12. B12 is far and away the largest B vitamin deficiency. Vitamins D, C, and then also iron and zinc. As that is the a very brief intro. Don't worry, we're going to go more into this later on. Or worry, depending on your interest in this. But we are going into it more. So, remember the elderly are at risk for malnutrition and they are to some degree at risk just because they're old. Uh, that is itself a risk factor. And remember that we talk about macronutrients especially, that's definitely the most common nutrient complaint and concern is uh, 
the concerns are calories, protein, and maybe water. That's the intro. You guys have a good one, and I will catch you next time. Bye.